Good day, everyone. We are here with Oscar Torre and director Greg Morgan. Uh, we are so excited to have them here today. Thank you. Oscar Torre, an actor, if you do not know him uh, yet, please, you're going to get to know them quite a bit. First of all, thank you for being here with our Latino Scoop audience. We have our audience all over. Um, both of your names are blowing up quite a bit. You have a film coming out. Well, it's out already, The Boatman. Greg, Oscar, tell us a little bit about this movie. Well, you start since uh, you wrote it. Okay. Um, it's, it's a movie, a drama, about this coyote that takes people across the border. Um, and there's much more to it. It's kind of like a ghost story involved there. And um, I think I'll let, let this man <laughs> take it off. There. I'm going to hand that off right there. Um, I play a coyote, and uh, what interested me about the role was that it was unlike any other role that I've, I've read before, and it was telling the story of crossing over, crossing the border, but in a different way that I had seen before as well. I found it interesting that the hero of the story is the coyote, the character I'm playing, which is not usual. Usually the coyote is a villain in the story, but the character was really interesting to me because he wasn't necessarily a good guy. He wasn't a bad guy. He was just very human. Uh, he was an alcoholic. He was someone unlikable. And that I liked. I liked the fact that he didn't care what people thought of him. In fact, he rather you not like him. They kept him alive in a way. People staying away from him. And I thought that, that was interesting. And also that he had no memories. He had issues with his memory. Without mm -hmm. going into a, mm -hmm. giving anything away of the story, mm -hmm. I thought that was a challenge as an actor not being able to rely on that. On, on, I usually do the work and create the history for my character and that affects a lot of the things I say or do or think. But in this case, it was more instinctual. I did things, but I wasn't sure why I was doing it. It just felt that this is the best way for me to do it. Uh, and, and I thought that was interesting. It made it a great role that, was, that started on paper. Mm -hmm. You two are creating a huge buzz right now. Tomorrow is the Imagine Awards. You are both, you've both been nominated. Yes. Best director, best film, best actor in a feature film. How does it feel? Well, I, I'm really thrilled. Well, first of all, I think it's you know wonderful that such a small film like ours, you know, gets nominated amongst mm -hmm. such great, huge films and um, and great actors. And it, I, I'm sure both of us feel the same way that we're just honored mm -hmm. by it. And uh, Oscar, you were the executive producer as well on this film. I know you wear many, many hats, writer, producer, uh, director, tell us Well, I wasn't a director or, or writer or anything like that in this story. Um, but you are, and other I, times. Well, yes, yes, and I, and I look, it, it helps when I'm looking at a film mm -hmm. as well, because I'm looking at the, the writing, and in this case, it totally worked. Um, but going back to your question, it was, it was an honor it's an honor to be nominated for an Hand Award, uh, an award that um, basically puts a spotlight on, on the work of Latino filmmakers, or in this case, of Latino stories. Mm -hmm, absolutely. Done in his case, not by a Latino, which I think mm -hmm. that's that's important in the, in the future. Mm -hmm. We need more people like Greg Morgan mm -hmm. that can see a film and say, you know, this story can be told by uh, Latinos. Mm -hmm. Or like we have another project uh, that hopefully we'll be shooting soon that I found that amazing that he was open to casting any ethnicity in all the roles. That's not common. Mm -hmm. People, especially if you're white, you tend to think, okay, it's going to be a white role. It should be maybe, maybe I'll cast a Latino or. Because you've been cast for different characters. I have, I have, and sometimes I've been cast great. for different characters and they change the name to Latino. Mm -hmm. And it wasn't when I, I was first cast. Which is a blessing. I'm not complaining, and I've been very blessed to, to work. But also, I'm seeing that a lot of times movies and TV do not reflect the society that we live in. Mm -hmm. it, go, but going back to the award, it's great that it's it's spot it puts a spotlight on on the work that we're doing. So it's, I think it's a very important mm -hmm. award and an honor to be nominated. Absolutely. And your character, um, the casting for, for Miguel El Maldito. Uh, Greg, how, I mean, he did a fabulous job. I mean, excellent. So, as far as that, your character, you were not very liked 
in that. <laughs> is that okay with you? That you were you had some I take it as a compliment. Oh. I take it as a compliment because it's it's I think it's it's the tendency to any actor to want to be liked, to for their characters to be liked. We all want to be liked. And uh, but that was something that interested me in, the, in this character that he wasn't a likable person. But despite not being likable, he did the right thing. He had compassion. Uh, would I want to hang out with him in real life? No, I would avoid him. I would, you know, I see him in a restaurant, I'd go the other way. Because he had that, he had that, that thing about him that, that I found interesting. Uh, so yeah, I take it as a compliment that, that if you didn't like him, that's great. But at some point, you end up rooting for him mm -hmm. and even caring for him, and and I thought that was that was interesting. Well, it was definitely your character is definitely memorable, which is good. Thank you. Yes. <laughs> the whole, the cinematography, the music, everything in the film was was just extraordinary. It we've been hearing it being called entertaining. I think that's exactly that's the word. It was point. entertaining. It kept me. Yes. Uh, almost out of my chair in many many scenes, and it just you just wanted to know what was going to happen next. Yes. Um, as far as uh, I mean, your character as well. Like I said, do you usually play the the bad guy in many roles? I played uh, honestly. I've been blessed to to. Uh, I think I played. I play roles that which I like. That live in a gray area. They're not black and white, and sometimes they seem bad at the beginning, and later on they tend to be a good guy that mm -hmm. does some bad things. But in some cases, you're kind of glad that he does those bad things. Mm -hmm. um, but I've I've been blessed to play, you know, like La Droga Roll Ladron, and Ladron is that right. it's a comedic role. Yes. Yes. He's an out of work actor, you know. It's he's far from menacing or anything like that. Mm -hmm. um, so I, I've been very lucky. But I think I, I've been lucky as well to have played some characters that are a little shady and they've been somewhat memorable. Mm -hmm. Now you were born in Miami, is that correct? I was born and raised in Miami. Who am yeah, yeah, my family's Cuban. Well, I love that you're bilingual. You speak both languages fluently. Um, a lot of you today, they're really embarrassed mm -hmm. about uh, to speak Spanish. What are your thoughts on that today and how do you think you could... You I know, think it's a huge that? disadvantage. I wish I spoke more languages, mm -hmm. honestly. I'd be working more. Mm -hmm. um, so I think it's it's a huge mistake, and I understand because you, especially from a different generation, you're kind of afraid to uh, to be discriminated mm -hmm. for not speaking for not speaking perfect English, and, and you kind of hid your ethnicity. But it, it, I, in the long run, it was it's a mistake. I think it's important to embrace your culture. At the same time, embrace the culture of the country that we live in, mm -hmm. and take advantage of both. Mm -hmm. It's an advantage; it's not a disadvantage. And if you're able to speak more than one language, that's that's a huge advantage. Plus, it's the language of my parents, mm -hmm. um, and it's in my blood. That's mm -hmm. where I come from. Like it or not, that's my blood, and I'm a certain way, and I react a certain way, and I'm using my hands a lot while I'm talking. <laughs> because I'm Latino, and I get like, very excited <laughs> about, about things, because it's the me. Right. This film was made several years ago, Yes. correct? Now, the whole topic of immigration. Mm -hmm. This was years ago, and it's obviously continuing, and that's how it's all about. Sure. What were your thoughts? What was your vision when, when, when completing this film? Well, originally this concept was not really had anything to do with the border. Um, it was about this uh, trucker that came across the dead and dying, and um, they whispered their last words to him, and that changed this character over time. That was the original concept. So we took that and said, hey, there's, there's even back in, a couple years ago, there was still talk, and this is way before Trump, there's still talk about border issues, so I said, let's put this story over the context of people crossing the border and make it a coyote instead of a trucker and so forth. Um, and make the whole, and change it to make the whole cast Latin. And um, because, first of all, that's where I think independent films should take the lead on because obviously the studios aren't. So um, that's where it came from. But now, with the Trump <laughs> issue, it's just completely blown up. It was really, really kind of like um, we weren't expecting it. Wow, it's 
been getting so much, so many great reviews, and they're they are talking about that. And right now, it's people are feeling that, which is good. It kind of came at the right time. Sure. Mm -hmm. But I think one of the great things that, that Greg did with the film was that it shows the reality. I mean, even my character says it in the story. It shows the reality of the people that come across the border, and he's not taking. He's not talking politics. This is the reality of people that, in the most part. That, are, that come across the border, that come to the U.S., are coming for a better life. Mm -hmm. They're coming because they want a better life. They want to be able to, and sometimes not even for themselves, for their children, mm -hmm. to be able to give them a better Absolutely. life, to, for them to have a future. And this was real. This is. This it's is real. I mean, it doesn't matter how you feel politically about the yeah. issue. Exactly. This is the reality of the people that are coming across the border. They want a better life. They're running away from. And, and you think about Mexico, Marcos, and and poverty and. Who wouldn't do the same thing being put in that position? And I think the film highlights and, and shows that in a very human way. Mm -hmm. And that's important. And I think it, it, it helps the audience have empathy. Mm -hmm. And here in California, we look close to the border, you know the story, and we all know people. But in other parts of the US, very yeah. obvious with what's going on in the news, they don't feel the same way, and they don't see the world the same way. And sometimes in, in, when you tell a story in an entertaining kind of way, it makes people think. They, they lower their guard a little, mm -hmm. and makes people think about, okay, you know, I, I can relate to that. I can identify with somebody who wants to give their family. The guy who lives in, I don't know, Iowa or something, has two jobs to support his family, can relate to the same thing that somebody that's crossing the border with their family and it's risking their life doing this for the same reasons, to give their family a better life. True. This film has gone so well everywhere, film festivals. What is next for you both together? Because I'm sure you're being hit up right now with, can I be in your next film? Am I correct, both of you that <laughs> produce Where and direct? <laughs> <laughs> well, it's funny because uh, I did write a script that has gotten lots of praise, and I specifically wrote a role for him in it. Um, we, we really kind of function well together while shooting the film. And we became close friends, and I said, I got this role for you. And he read the script, and he I likes it. it. I yeah. love it. And it's another character that's interesting that's in that gray area <laughs> yeah. as well. Well, we are looking forward to hearing more from both of you. Thank we you. congratulate you already. You're both winners, in our opinion. Um, Thank you well, much. tomorrow, we wish you love. We're going to send you positive vibes. Um, and everyone, Latino Scoop audience, if you have not checked them out, please check them out today. Oscar Torre, actor, Instagram. Greg Morgan Hollywood, is that correct? On Instagram, please check them out. Follow well, the them. The film is on, on Amazon. At, that, check it out online. Is there anywhere else we can find that? Because I know people are going to be Fandango, wanting to I think it's on Fandango now. It's on... Um, yeah, if you Google the Boatman yeah, movie, Google, watch right? the Boatman movie, uh, you'll find plenty of places you can watch it legally. Pay for it. <laughs> <laughs> so thank you, Latino Scoop. Audience, please check them out. It's been thank a you. pleasure. Thank you, boys. Thank you so much. Thank you.